Good morning. Uh, my name is John Davis and I'm Chief Executive of CPA UK, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association UK, and I'm delighted to have with me uh, this morning Lord Folkes, George Folkes. George, welcome. Uh, good morning, John. Thanks for making time for this. Um, and as you know, we're talking to a range of parliamentarians about uh, the experience uh, of being a parliamentarian during the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, the pandemic. And I wonder whether you can give us a bit of a sense so far of your experience as a member of the House of Lords in the UK of operating in this in this strange time. Well, I've been locked down here in Edinburgh uh, for eight weeks now. And so everything I've been doing has been from here in my home. And uh, it's been different in the Commons and the Lords. The Commons have moved on to the hybrid proceedings, which we are actually looking at in the Lords uh, for the future. Uh, but all our, almost all our proceedings in uh, the Lords have been done as virtual uh, proceedings. Uh, we had our uh, oral questions virtually to begin with. They started off, there was a little hiccup to start with from technical reasons. Uh, Lord Speaker getting, to, getting used to it. And then we had debates. We have debates. Uh, and yesterday we had our first committee session in uh, a virtual committee, committee session. In oral questions, we've now, the four questions, we've extended the time uh, to 10 minutes each. And we've got about eight, uh, supplement, eight or nine supplementary questioners uh, at each one. And that's more than we've actually have when we're sitting in the house. So, yeah. and some, interestingly, some people who don't normally participate when we're there in person, but I do, as you know, uh, but some of the, my colleagues who don't normally participate are doing it now online. So it's got more, it's got a wider group of people in. Why do you think and, that is? Uh, the debates we have, I think people feel happier. Some people feel happier uh, sitting at home and answering, asking questions. And I think I've got a loud voice uh, and I can get up at question time and, as we do in the House of Lords. And we're not called by the speaker, as you know, by the Lord Speaker. Uh, we, it's the, uh, almost the loudest it's in or we do it in order around the house. Whereas uh, there's a list for speakers now, which we don't normally have at question time. And so people come in in a more orderly fashion and those with quieter voices are able to come in. And then with debates, we have a limit of 50 because of technical reasons, but that's quite a lot uh, of, of uh, members to participate. And we get between two and three, maybe up to about five or six minutes each in a debate. Uh, and again, that's, not untypical for some of the debates we have in the Lords. So that's some clear pluses of, of uh, people perhaps participating who might not, or in ways they wouldn't have participated, and, and uh, being able to plan their, their, um, their, their involvement in debates, I suppose. Yes. Uh, is there anything you think that you've found in those early sessions missing from, from how it's working? Yes, the, the thing that's missing very much in every session is spontaneity. Yeah. Uh, there's not the opportunity if someone says something daft to come in and uh, counter them uh, or to uh, raise questions arising from what previous speakers have said in the same kind of way. Uh, and we found that in the committee stage yesterday where uh, normally at committee stage there was a lot of interventions backwards and forwards. And now we have to email the clerk to say we want to come in after the minister, which is a bit complicated. So committee stages, we're still finding our way. And I'm on the procedure committee. So we, we meet almost weekly to look at how we're operating. And we'll be looking uh, next week at how this first committee stage has uh, operated and seeing if we can make any changes. The, the, the House still sits in a real, in reality, it, it will be doing today, uh, but only to consider procedural matters like suggestions from the procedure committee, like uh, appointments to new uh, select committees, and we had a couple of introductions in the chamber of uh, ministers uh, coming in. Um, but otherwise, everything is virtual. So it sounds as though, one way or another, you, the Lords is finding its way through this, as with other institutions. It was interesting talking to members of the Commons, some of whom, or well, most of whom actually, were very were enjoying the list of speakers, which of course is something in some formats you're used to in the Lords. But that looked like it's something which, uh, in some ways, the Commons are learning from the Lords. But You've sat in conscious both houses, George, as well as in the Scottish Parliament, all reacting in different ways. Um, are there other particular challenges in the Lords or other sort of observations you can make from having been in those three parliaments? I think there are particular challenges. I mean, some of my colleagues 
aren't on uh, in the internet. I mean, some of the very old ones, uh, and we do have we have a much higher age profile, and so they're lo lost out completely, uh, locked out completely, and that's a great pity. Um, I, I think otherwise, those who who are on uh, internet who have got uh, and can operate the technology, they're participating more. It's it's very interesting. Virtual voting, remote voting, we haven't got round to yet. We'll be looking at that at the next procedure committee meeting. But there was a bit of a, a, a balls up. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, in yeah. the, uh, that's all right. Thanks, John. In the uh, Commons yesterday, with the remote voting procedure, when the Chancellor of the Exchequer actually voted the wrong way. So I'm asking that we look at remote voting more carefully when we, if we bring it in in the Lawrence to make sure that uh, we don't fall into the same kind of trap. Um, the Scottish Parliament I've been watching on uh, the television have been meeting uh, more often as a Parliament, uh, but with fewer people participating. But they don't have the hybrid procedures that they have in uh, the Commons. I think the Commons seems to be working well with the, the new Speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, actually there in the chair, and people coming in from um, uh, virtually as well as um, in the Commons uh, chamber. And we'll be looking at that now to see if we can move to that within the next few weeks. Well, that's interesting. And, and um, I suppose one of the interesting things will be as perhaps slowly uh, countries come out and the UK comes through the pandemic and moves on to a different stage as to what you think we might, or the Lords might, might keep of some of these innovations going forward. Yes, I, I, I hope we don't keep uh, too many, many of them because they are difficult and, and we lack the spontaneity. We lack the opportunity of talking uh, behind the uh, speaker's chair, as it were, with colleagues. Uh, and a lot of politics, as uh, members of the CPA know only too well, is taken pla are, takes place not in the chamber or in the committee session, but in the corridors around. And we don't, that, that's a big loss. Uh, uh, but I, I do hope that uh, perhaps on the list, We've been less uh, formal in terms of addressing people, although some, some colleagues still say the honorable, the, the noble and learned member and so on, but most of us have been a little less formal. And in the two introductions uh, in the chamber, they were carried out much less formally. So I hope we can get rid of some of that, uh, that the sort of charade that takes place in the Commons and the formality uh, and the Lords and the formality uh, and uh, move towards a more streamlined procedure. George, that's interesting. I know the New Zealand Parliament is, is one that you know well, including uh, from re fairly recently from a, a CPA visit there. Obviously, a, 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 a Parliament of one house, but again, I think has been operating entirely virtually, but it, as with much of the New Zealand response, very successfully. But um, I wonder whether you've had a chance to look at other Commonwealth Parliaments as to, as to what they're up to or, or any sort of thoughts on how others are tackling this? I haven't had a look at the Commonwealth Parliament, but I'm on the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And we're uh, going to, we've had a virtual, two virtual meetings so far of the Socialist Bureau. Uh, and one of the things that we've done is had the questionnaire about how parliaments are operating around Europe. And we've put in how the Commons and the Lords are operating. And uh, I've seen how other parliaments are operating in Austria and Germany. Uh, in Spain and, and France. was actually taking part in it on her way back from the parliament on the train, then on a bus and then from her home where a little child came in and spoke behind her. So in Sweden, they're much further ahead. And it was interesting to see that. Uh, and we're also finding out how they're dealing with COVID-19 in a different way and learning lessons from that as we, as we should. And I think uh, the, New Zealand in particular, the way that uh, uh, Jacinda Ardern has dealt with it has been tremendous, exemplary. And I wish we'd been able to do it the same way in the United Kingdom. Well, it's certainly, as you know, uh, George, for, for CPA, learning lessons from, from across the Commonwealth is a key thing. And indeed, CPA HQ have been doing some, some great work uh, bringing together webinars of that. So I think there is some good learning going on. I'm sure that's that's going to continue. I just wonder if there are any other sort of last thoughts you had on uh, on, on on what you're learning through this 
how Parliament is responding to this. And on the CPA, incidentally, I think it's, uh, it'll be very interesting because once we get back to normal, uh, on our bilateral uh, visit, once we get them going again, it'll be really great to sit around the table and talk with colleagues yeah. from other Commonwealth countries about how they've experienced Uh, the, how they've dealt with it. Announcements are going to be a bit different from now on. Uh, I'm sure you'll need different lectures, uh, different speakers, and there'll be different issues coming up uh, once we actually can get back and get them all around the, the table in Westminster in uh, the Attlee Suite or wherever and, uh, and speak about it. So I think it is going to change George, I'm sorry. I think I lost some of that in the in the way that um, the, the technology affects us. But I think I lost the tail end of that. But absolutely, we we certainly at CPUK look forward to, to to getting back to some of the old practices. And, and again, like the parliaments we work with, uh, also seeing what we can keep of the new ways that we're we're working. So um, uh, we'll keep in touch on that. But. If we may, we'll stay in touch uh, with you, particularly as, a, as you say, a member of the Procedure Committee, looking at how the laws does respond. But, um, but for now, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you, John. And I look forward to being around the table with you instead of this uh, uh, remote uh, contact. But it, it works nevertheless. Thanks very much. And I've enjoyed very much your uh, questions and taking part. Thanks, George. Thank you very much. Bye for now.